The world is currently holding its breath. North Korea has declared plans to fire rockets towards the Pacific island of Guam, where the United States has a military base. However, in its subradling threat, Pyongyang declared that the missiles would go down in the sea 30 to 40 kilometers 1,924 miles off Guam. This would be just outside U.S. territorial waters, so, politically speaking, the United States would not necessarily be obliged to strike back. There are, however, fears that this could still prompt a violent escalation. Even if North Korea did deliberately fire wide, U.S. President Donald Trump, who recently threatened Pyongyang with fire and fury, may still feel provoked. Or the North Korean rocket might accidentally fall inside U.S. territory after all. What is clear is that if there were to be a military confrontation, it would affect the whole international community. 1. Would the NATO states be obliged to come to the aid of the U.S. Article 5 of the North Atlantic Treaty states that an armed attack against one or more member states in Europe or North America shall be considered an attack against them all? However, this is limited by Article 6, which says that this mutual assistance obligation applies only to attacks on the territory of any of the parties in Europe or North America or on the territory of or on the islands under the jurisdiction of any of the parties in the North Atlantic area north of the Tropic of Cancer. This elaborately formulated clause excludes the island of Guam, as it is too far south. However, people in NATO circles are saying that the Allies are unlikely to insist on this limitation and would support the U.S. nonetheless, too. What form would support take support in the sense of the NATO treaty does not inevitably mean that all the Allies would send battleships to the South Pacific if Guam were attacked. Article 5 does state that the members of the alliance must, in principle, provide assistance, says Matthias Dombinsky from the Peace Research Institute Frankfurt. However, it's up to them to assess how they provide this support. As far as Germany is concerned, the political scientist speculates we would provide diplomatic help, we would declare solidarity, but we probably would anti-provide military support. 3. What about Britain? The government in London has always maintained a special relationship with the United States. This has seen British troops go to war alongside the Americans on several occasions, as, for example, when United Kingdom entered the Iraq War in 2001 at the side of the former U.S. President George W. Bush. Dimbinsky emotions running too high The British have always upheld the transatlantic relationship and the NATO partnership. However, the security expert Matthias Dimbinsky doesn't believe Britain would leap to America's assistance if Guam really were to be attacked. In terms of security policy, he argues that the UK is not as much of a presence in the Western Pacific region as it once was. 4. Who else might provide the US with military support Although a North Korean attack on the United States is so far only hypothetical, Australia has already assured America of its support. The Australian Premier Malcolm Turnbull explained that this was an absolute requirement in the ANZUS Pacific Security Pact. In fact, the treaty contains no such obligation. The partners in the alliance are simply supposed to consult each other in the event of an attack. However, Australia is regarded as a reliable partner in military operations. It participated in both the Korean and the Vietnam Wars, and sent relatively high numbers of troops to both. The eyes of the world are upon U.S. President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. This is also the case with South Korea, which sent the highest number of troops to Vietnam after the United States. However, if the conflict with North Korea were to escalate, the question would not really arise, as South Korea would in any case probably be the country worst affected by North Korean aggression. Elsewhere in the region, Japan is also on the side of the USA. However, the Japanese are unlikely to get involved militarily. There are very narrow constraints built into the country's pacifistically oriented constitution, and despite the growing pressure from Washington there is still great skepticism among the population regarding all things military. 5. How likely is a war between the U.S. and North Korea? Matthias Dombinsky does not believe that the question of military assistance will arise. The number of casualties in a war on the Korean peninsula alone would be so high that he believes both sides must have a fundamental interest in avoiding a military escalation. Furthermore, the United States has sufficient military might to respond to any such military strike without the aid of its European allies, Dombinsky says. All in all, he is of the view that much too much is being made of the whole current confrontation.